And then we had a real good vet here at Clarendon, Charles Daly, and he was the top vet in the whole Panhandle, probably Texas. And uh, he came to me and he said, Bill, they are bringing these cattle into these grow pens from these sales and they're running death losses from 12 to 25 percent of the cattle are dying in before they get out of the grow pen. And, that's a, and he said, they've got to get these cattle outside. He said, I'll help you get cattle. So I started. And I figured out how I wanted my money to come in, and I told you that. And I wanted to do it right. I guaranteed the count. I would not stand any of their death loss. But if any steer was short or missing from that death loss, I paid for them myself, not my partner, not anybody. And um, we started <clears throat> getting these cattle in, and he helped me get started on a good program. And I just wasn't losing any cattle. And I got these cattle from San Antonio from these two people. And boy, they really liked my deal. And we got our agreement all worked out. We never had one cross word. And they would send me, I'd start taking cattle as soon as my <coughs> fall cattle were shipped. We'd usually rest about a week and start getting cattle in because they were really coming to the sales. And uh, he would send me oh, maybe three or four truckloads at one time. And uh, he would uh, we would unload those cattle, and we had different methods we doctored down through the years, but we just, we ended up with him giving them a kind of medicine before they let, put them, went on the trucks when they came out of the sale. They were brought out of the sale, unloaded, and then the next morning they gave them all their shots they wanted, everything they wanted done to them, branded them and everything, loaded them on the truck and hauled them straight to us. Well, <clears throat> we would unload uh, those cattle and part of the ways we were doctoring, we'd give them another shot right then. Then we'd get them out in a small pasture. And we wouldn't bother them much the next day, but we'd ride through them. And by small pasture, I'm talking about a section pasture, or two sections maybe, that had live water running right through it. And I would put out meal and salt troughs at both water gaps. And when you turn new yearlings out in a pasture, they try to wear it out walking around the fence. Well, every time they got to the fence, they'd come right by the water and drink what they wanted. They'd come right by one of those meal and salt troughs. And they had never been fed any salt anyway, I don't think. And They'd learn to eat that meal, and then in about two days, we would, if we, anything in them, we looked at them every day, counted every one of them, but in about a day or two, we would, if there were any sick cattle or anything in them, we pulled them out to the corral, just drove them right in.
Then we took those other cattle and out to a bigger pasture. Uh, and uh, we just, then we, we would take these cattle in the corral and doctor them a full three days until we were pretty sure that they were well. And we threw them out then into another, a sick pasture. And uh, we would have those cattle eaten cake by then. And the cattle that we had outside, the, the fur moved out of the first pasture, we'd put out meal and salt troughs and pour a sack of cake on top of it. Well, they'd stop. They knew what the trough was. They'd stop and heck, first thing you know, they'd all be eating that cake. And uh, we would leave them in that second pasture probably 14 days. And we counted those cattle every day. And then we had anything there's any doubt about. We had picked up and gone back to where they could go to the sick pasture. And uh, then we'd move this, say, three, four truckloads of cattle off into a big pasture. But we would go to feeding them cake with the pickup, even before we went to that last big pasture, they all knew the pickup was bringing the deal, and they were all coming to cake. And we would feed them every day after they were in the big pasture for about another week, and that way we could count them, see, while we were feeding them. And if we were short anything, well, we got somebody out looking and uh, but usually they'd all be there and they kind of stay in pretty good bunches you know and uh, i did that i had uh, two different places on that ranch that i could do that with and i had my ranch at oaks creek that we could do that on and uh, everywhere I brought new cattle in, we could do that. And later on, Kate bought uh, 30 sections at Shamrock. And we, we brought cattle over there. Old country's real rough, but cattle did well. Water wasn't worth a darn, and we have got that rigged up where it was good. And... and uh, Anyway, I did the same business with uh, uh, the same people down there forever. Every now and then we would have a little disagreement on price and they'd drop out for about a year or something, but the next year they was ready to come back again. <laughs> And uh, I'll tell you what, and anyone that hears this will not believe it, but I had a seven year, a uh, 17 year record of the cattle we handled and of the death loss each year. Average three quarters of 1%. Great improvement. Hell, uh, it, grown cows. My cow herd lose two percent. Yeah. And those darn yearlings were out dead them. Yeah. And I couldn't ever believe that. And uh, they finally quit buying the cattle in the direction they were buying and went to the south. And they got a lot better cattle. Hmm. They were really good cattle, but they weren't as 
healthy as those cattle they got from the southwest. Over there where it's so dry, they went to a wetter country and the cattle, they were, I guess came from smaller places. They were they were good cattle, and uh, they. Uh, but we had a higher death loss, sir. The highest one I ever had was two and a half percent one year. We couldn't get any medicine that was helping. It, uh, you know, they get immune to that medicine. Seemed like, and anyway. We finally, uh, we got them cured, but we, it, we lost some cattle that time, and I, I had one and a half percent, uh, probably, and, and one time I know I had two percent loss, but for 17 years I went there with a three quarters of one percent loss. And nobody ever complained about a two percent death loss or a two and a half. They would have given you three, but I didn't ever take it. I, I guaranteed my count, and uh, as like I said, I wouldn't withstand their death loss because if I'd done that. They'd have bought every junky son of a gun that came through that was cheap, and I'd have had my place covered up with dead cattle. Right. This way, we didn't lose any cattle. And I got, oh, oh uh, the, Billy Mitchell was the man that was sending me the cattle, and he uh, was the best calf buyer I ever saw, and I could have, 15, 20 pastures cattle. And when you drove through and looked at one pasture of them, you could turn around and leave and say you'd seen them because there wasn't any difference in them. They were every one just the same. Now, I don't mean the cattle all looked alike, but there'd be 10% of them of uh, outstanding individuals, and there'd be so much percent of Good cattle. And they were all pretty good cattle. You know. We got some pretty rough cattle out of the southwest. Uh, they were Hereford cattle, and they, uh, what they did, they gathered their cattle every four years on huge old ranches, and they would just, they had. All of the water was fenced, huge holding pens. And what they do when they got ready to ship, well, they might, they didn't ever feed. They wouldn't feed a cow down there south of San Antonio. They thought that was criminal. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, in winter or any time, they didn't believe in feeding. They, they either lived or they died. And when they gathered them, well, they'd have salt blocks that they put in there and that kind of things. And they had <coughs> gates that they could get on the windmill tower. And they could pull a deal and lock those yeah. gates. And they, when they got a, a car load or a, a, a truckload or two in there, or however many they were expecting, they'd slam those gates and then they'd load them, haul them out, and then they would take them to San Antonio and class the cattle. And uh, they had some old three-year-old steers in there, something, you know, well, they went off to something else, but the yearling the yearling cattle came came to me, what Billy got, and uh, it, that was interesting, and, and boy, those cattle were tough. I did, that's where I had my good death losses, yeah. and we went down there where there were more cattle on smaller pastures and stuff, and it rained a lot, and I had, I had kind of nearly normal death loss, sir. 
but uh, okay. most everybody that put steers out figured to 3% death loss. That's just the way everybody did, but right. I, I sure didn't have that. Nice. But I had one of the best ranches in the country to do it on. And I had nice small pastures, just right for about 100, maybe 200 yearlings to be the biggest. Yeah. And uh, wow. it was live water in it, and it was the best watered ranch I've ever seen. It always would have <coughs> One to two windmills. If it was no live water in it, it'd have at least two windmills in a, about a two-section pasture. Mm -hmm. Boy, the cattle gained well. They did well. And everything under those conditions. 